So Geoffrey Hinton, widely regarded as the godfather of deep learning, has put out a new paper describing what he called the forward-forward algorithm. At the time of recording, this paper is cited by a grand total of one paper. So the paper is currently available online as a preprint, so it's still under review by the scientific community, but this is coming from Geoffrey Hinton, which is a big deal for his role in the early days of deep learning, even before he took on his current role at Google Brain. Without incorporating any regularization such as the dropout, uh, the forward forward re itself reports a 1.4% test error on MNIST, which is comparable to the more conventional backpropagation algorithm. I'm currently recording a video on the forward forward algorithm, so I'm not going into the details here, but I'll link to the video when that is published on the channel. But what we'll do today is a lot more conventional. We'll talk about the backpropagation algorithm, which is the de facto standard algorithm for training neural networks, which came into use in neural networks as early as 1986 through the work of Hinton and his fellow researchers as well. We'll see an explanation of how it works, and that will be handy when you get into coding our neural network along with backpropagation and gradient descent. So let's go with an intuition first on what backpropagation is. I have two neurons, negative 3 and plus 5. This, you can treat them as our input, okay? And the true value is 11. Now this is the value that we want to predict, okay? But the 11 is the value we want to predict. Let's say our neural network, this is a very simple neural network, if our neural network predicts, uh, makes a prediction of 10, then we would compute the error, which is 11 minus 10, and we get 1. And that 1 is our cost, right? C-O-S-T, our error, our cost. Now ideally you want the error to be as small as possible, meaning you want to make ideally no error, right? And the way you want to do that is to adjust the weights that you have. Right now it's plus 2, plus 2, these are the weights, this plus 2 and this plus 2, these are two, uh, both of them are the weights. Now ideally you want the error to be as small as possible. And the way to do that is to adjust the weights, which in, uh, on our screen here is the plus 2 and the plus 2. Right? You want to adjust the weight such that in a perfect scenario, the input of negative 3 and 5 combined with the weights will yield a value of 11. So in that case, the error will be 0. So since we do not know the weights, we have to guess them. Now we can guess them randomly just putting some random values or we could initialize everything to 0 for example and then we can compute the error because every, there, there is an error. Right now, if you put a plus 2 and plus 2 and you do a weighted sum of that, you get a 4. Right? We get the value. We compute the error, we find how much, what is the margin of the error, and then we adjust the weights just so slightly in the direction that reduces the error. So let's start our guess with the weight of plus 2, plus 2. The weight of sum of the input is plus 2 multiplied by negative 3, and then plus plus 2 multiplied by 5, and so that's a 10, this minus a 6, that would be a 4. Now the error would then be 11 minus 4, and that would be 7. So we say that we want to adjust the weights. Now, if we adjust the weights in a direction that reduces the error, you should see a value that comes closer to 11. And we can do this by computing the gradient of the error with respect to the weights. We'll see an intuition of that later. But this in calculus is called the derivative, right? Or the slope, okay? So the derivative or the slope of the error with respect to the weights. So with respect to the plus 2, plus 2. A vector of plus 2, plus 2 with respect to that. What is the slope? What is the derivative of that? And then we take one step in this 2D gradient space by learning what direction to step in. So we want to know what direction to step in and how far to step in that direction such that the error could be reduced by the most amount. So this step is referred to as the learning rate. And you'll hear this term coming up a lot later on when you code your own neural network using PyTorch, using Keras, uh, you hear the learning rate a lot, right? In this example, we'll simplify this by setting it to 1. We say the learning rate is 1, the step is 1. So meaning at most, we take a step of uh, 1 in either direction of x or y in this gradient space. In the real world, you see a learning rate of 0 0.005, 0 0.0005, something like that, right? But let's just simplify that and let's put ourselves uh, some constraint. And the constraint is that you can either move the weight in a uh, plus 1 or negative 1 direction, uh, either for x or y. So through the use of calculus, with the directive of vector plus 2, plus 2, this is the case uh, on a whiteboard here, you will realize that the direction that reduces the error the most is in the negative x direction. So you would want to minim you won't want to take this plus two and you want to move it in, in a negative direction. But let's say we did the opposite and instead we take a step in, let's say, the negative y direction. So this one, we take it in the negative y direction. So we adjust the weight to instead of plus two, let's take it in the negative direction and make it plus one, for example. So right now we have two, two, right? Now instead of moving this, the x value, instead of moving the x value, we move the y value. And we move it, let's say we move it towards the negative direction, so we move this downwards. What would happen? If we move this 2, move it down to a 1, somewhere like here, and then now this value is going to be 1. Let's say we move it here to this point. Now we compute again. And if you do the computation, this is 5 plus 1, that's 5, minus 6, because negative 3 plus, uh, times 2, so that's a negative 1. So now you ask yourself, what would the error now be? That's an error of 12, right? That's the cost of 12. We said there's a cost of 12. And so we've actually increased the error by 5 because earlier on, at the first iteration, the error is only 7 because 11 minus 4, that's 7. Now the error is 12. So going from 7 to 12, that's increasing the error by 5, which is the completely opposite of what we want, right? 
But instead, if we follow the gradient, which is the direction that reduces the error the most, we will end up with a vector that looks probably more like this, right? So what we do here is we keep the direction on y. So plus two, this is still plus two. Instead of moving the y, we move the x. And what do we do with the x? We move it by a negative direction. So instead of a plus two, we move it down by one, so plus one. And we recompute this map. We see this is 10 minus three, that's a seven. So the error is 11 minus seven, that is a four. That gets us closer to a local minimum because here initially the error is seven. This, the error is now four. So you reduce the error by three. And awesome that we're getting closer to a local minimum now. Now after this iteration, you repeat the process again, computing the gradient, and then you take a step again that reduces the error further. So in this case, uh, taking another step in the positive direction of y, so instead of a plus two, so remember we take a step here, we add one, so plus two. Now we take another step here, going from plus two to plus three, getting closer to the local minimum. You can continue to iterate, and in this case, with the predetermined learning rate, suppose you want to uh, try to minimize the error by taking a step in the negative direction of x. So for example, instead of a plus one, you want to take it down to plus zero. Then you recompute that. You are going to get a vector of x zero, y three. Now the weighted sum of x zero, y three would then be 15. And the error is 11 minus 15, so that's a four. That's a negative four. Now this is not better than the previous iteration. So we know that our learning rate is possibly either too large, meaning the learning rate of one. Remember, we moved by a degree of one. So you may want to adjust the learning rate or that you maybe have reached a, lo a local minimum. So you now just, uh, let's say this is the local minimum and you just overstepping it again. And then you, if, if you take the opposite direction, you're overstepping it again. So you're never going to reach the, the actual minimum, but you're just you know, hopping around, skipping around. And so you have to make a judgment and say, okay, this is the right place to stop without traveling this gradient space any further. Um, it's when the error is 1 because that's 12, 11. It's not guaranteed to be the global optimum, but it is a local minimum. And you accept that, right? So the weighted sum is then 12, the error is 11, and your weights would be plus 1, plus 3. This is kind of how a neural network trains or how it learns. And that is the intuition behind backpropagation, right? You start with a random guess of the weights, and then you compute the gradient of the error, and then you take a step in the direction that reduces the error the most. If you have studied uh, calculus, you will realize that this is the same as the derivative of the error with respect to the gains, the dy dx of the error. If not, don't worry, I'll have one last tool in my toolbox, and I'll use that to demonstrate an example of gradient descent, so you can at least walk away with an idea of how this works. So let me open up my R terminal. We're not going to learn R, it's not really the focus of this playlist, but I'll show you an example of that using R, okay? So uh, I have R open up right now. I'm using R version 4.2.1, not that it really matters. And I'm going to load in a few, I'm going to load in my animation library, and I'm going to set some simple parameters to change the speed of the animation. So I'm going to say any.options. You don't have to know any of this, but I'm going to set an interval, okay? I'm going to clear the screen, and I'm going to just first run the green descent. Let me zoom in a bit, okay? And I'm going to say, Gradient descent, gr80.dasc, and we're gonna run that. So you see that on my screen now, you have this function. It says g equals to x squared plus 2y squared. So you can find different values of x squared and y squared. So you see different values on the screen. You see 18, 16, 14, 12, 10. But how do you find the value of x and y such that it minimizes the function, which gives you a minimum of z? So at what value of x and y? So you see this is the x, right? It goes from negative 3 and the y goes from 3, and it tries to step in a direction that minimizes z. Uh, this blue line here is the step, and you can control how big of a step it takes by using the learning rate which we learned about, which we just spoke about. You'll see that in code later in the next video, all right? So these are the different values of x and y. You could step in any direction. You could go from here, you could go from the other arc. We can, there, there's so many ways to get down to the local minimum. So think of it like, this is kind of like an altitude. What value of x and y would lead you to arrive at a minimum z? So this is 18, this is z16, z14, z12, and then this is z0. So in this case here, if x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, that gives you a minimum of z because z square, 0 square, 0 plus 2y square, and that's also 0. So 0 plus 0, that's a 0. So that's z equals to 0. Suppose that x is equal to negative 3 and y is equal to 3, so what do you get? So negative 3 square is 9, right? 9 plus 9 times 2, that's 18. So 18 plus 2, that's a 20, 27. So you see this is a 20, this is a 22, 24, this is a 27, all right? So at different values of x and y, you find a derivative, you find the slope, and then you take that direction that minimizes the value of z. So let me close this out. You could find the different parameters by saying gd, and then par, again, I'm not gonna talk about r now, I'm just gonna show you a quick example. It says that at this value, so you see this is not exactly zero, and that's because gradient descent, depending on where you stop, at what stopping point, it may not guarantee uh, a global optimum. But you could also ask for a plot. So this is the perspective plot. I believe that's why it's pers p. I'm not sure if I have to wrap them under plot, but let's try that. 
All right, so that's, that's okay. Uh, a lot of this stuff I teach in the data science bootcamp that I run. Uh, I actually have a more complex example, but that is using R and this series is not really about R. Uh, so I just copy the R code and I just run it for you. I'm not gonna explain uh, a lot of those things. So suppose I have a function. So this f2, that's my function. And my function takes uh, uh, two parameters, x and y, and then it just performs the sign and so on and so forth. There's cost and all that. I'm not gonna explain all that, but I'm just still, call I'm still calling gradient descent and I'm setting some initialized value. And I said, okay, do that. Uh, this is the learning rate. Go ahead and try to find a minimum. So let's do that. So this is the function that I code in. So sign and then uh, one over and then it's what you get and then it's the cost. So what value of x and y could minimize the output zero? So you see it takes a step here and then at some point it decided, hey, I need to do a sharp left. So it goes up and then again, it makes a sharp right. So somewhere like that. And then here you have the message saying that the maximum number of iterations reach. It doesn't mean that this value that you get, uh, if you print that out, doesn't mean that you, that is guaranteed to be the global optimum. Okay, but it, most times it's a reasonable enough approximation of the optima. And the way I explained that to my wife earlier is that uh, imagine you're at the top of the mountain and you're trying to find the fastest way to get down to find water, right? You're, 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 you're thirsty and you need to find water and you're top of the mountain. How would, what is a reasonable strategy to get from the top of the mountain down to where you can find water, all right? So the thing is, if you, at the peak of the mountain, if you wonder you know, what can give you the biggest descent at every single step, you can take a step in either direction of the 12 o'clock direction, the three o'clock direction, the six o'clock direction, the nine o'clock direction, or the 12 o'clock direction, which is forward. If you take a six o'clock direction, it's taking a step backwards, right? Now, at any point, you look at the directions that you have, the options that you have around you, and you choose the option that give you the biggest decrease in altitude, right? The greatest the greatest uh, drop in altitude. So at that point, you decide that, hey, maybe three o'clock is the best thing to do because it gives me the biggest decline. So you take that step, and then once you take that step, you reevaluate your options, and you say, well, now maybe I should take a six o'clock uh, step. So you take a step in the six o'clock direction, and you do that again, except your learning rate is the same. So your step, your stride length is always gonna be the same. You're always gonna take just the same amount of, of a stride, right? You're not gonna take a bigger step or take a smaller step. You're always gonna take the same step. It's a constant that you set in your neural network. And through that strategy of always taking the biggest descent in a certain direction, that's a re reasonable strategy to, to get from the top of a mountain down to the bottom and find your water and your source of water, hopefully quench your thirst. Right? So essentially, it is a very general purpose optimization algorithm. Some of us though, who are older, maybe if you're coming from a more traditional kind of a computer science background, you heard of something called an optimization uh, algorithm. Uh, this is kind of a general purpose optimization algorithm. So gradient descent, uh, it's able to find a local minimum uh, of a function by taking steps that are proportional to the negative of the gradient or the slope of the function at the current point. And that's what it is. So that about sums up the gradient descent and the backpropagation. In the next video, we're gonna go into the code and actually write the code out in PyTorch. So I'll see you in the next video.